We have a book buying problem. <laughs> yeah, we are back <laughs> with a second day where we went to two bookstores instead of one on the first day. And boy, did we find books. We so found so many we books. Found so many books. <laughs> Neither of us sounds disappointed in us about this. I'm like really proud. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm pretty enough. pleased with myself, Especially actually. Especially the first place. So the first place we went was a secondhand bookshop. Mm -hmm. And we got some crazy deals. Really crazy deals. We had no a, idea. I got a stack. We got a stack. A stack. Including like several hardbacks. And I think mine came to just over $19. Mine came to like 9 Yeah. But we also had no idea how much anything was going to be when we were Yeah, the there, there were no there prices were no on anything. no prices, no signs. Yeah. Like, I actually look for signage. People don't tend to actually read signs, but I make a lot of signs at the library, and I know people don't read them, so I look because I appreciate efforts in telling me what to do. Yes. Yeah, still didn't find no any signs. prices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to go first? Uh, I mean, sure. I guess we can oh. start with the f stuff we got at the used bookstore. Yeah. Want to do that? Mine is, uh, actually a lot of what I bought is a study in Shelby told me this was good. Yes, yeah, so who knows if that's <laughs> going to go horribly awry or not. It's going to be fun for everybody involved. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, I guess I'm going to lump these two together because yeah. they're by the same author. And then I have one to lump together as so, well. So, Jillian Flynn? Is it Gillian? Jillian? I, I, I assume it's Jillian. But it's spelled we'll go find an interview with her. G, so yeah, I know. I could have researched this but very easily. Why be right when we can be wrong? Yeah. Yeah, so I got a copy of Gone Girl and Sharp Objects, which I've already read. I used to have copies of these, but I lent them out and they never returned to me, which is very sad. And I've missed them on my bookshelf ever since because they're two of my favorite thrillers of all time. And yeah, I found them, picked them up. No looking back. And also, I'm not lending these out again because yeah. it happened for me once. It's not happening again. I feel like <laughs> I don't keep books once I've read them. Yeah, I um, I I donate anything that I didn't really enjoy. Like I keep I keep books that I love to death and I would probably reread in the future or recommend to people or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but if it was just sort of meh or subpar, then it's being donated yeah. or given to someone who really wants to read it anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what I mean is I had Felix Ever After, which I have a video on. Go watch it. <laughs> uh, and it, I loved it so much. It made my heart so warm. And yeah. it was like one of the best books I've read this summer. And I gave it to my cousin because I was like, you're the target audience for this. Yeah. And also I want you to read it and love it as much as I did. Yeah. So I think I, that just, or now that bookstagram is a thing, I tend to give away the things that I yeah. read because I guess you're it more generous. stresses my mom out that I have so many books on the shelves. That's fair. I, I buy a lot of them, case in point, this whole video. Part, uh, part of the reason I've been like buying so many books and also keeping them recently is because I recently had a huge purge of all my books. I got rid of the ones that have been on my bookshelf for years that I just don't really appreciate as much anymore or, you know, yeah, like... curating. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, and, uh, that was, that was a great thing to do. I'm glad I did it, but now it's like, my bookshelf is so empty. <laughs> I'm helping you fix that. So. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are helping me. So my two that have the same author, that is a, Shelby made me do it, are these guys by Liv Bray, And it is A Great and Terrible Beauty and Rebel Angels. Yeah. Yes, I did have to look at those. I can't read backwards. Yeah, yeah, it's Liv Bray's <laughs> first series. I believe. I think it might mm -hmm. be that A Great and Terrible Beauty might be her first book. So I was really obsessed with these when I was in high school and so I have a very special place in my heart oh for my them. Gosh, this is Christmassy, that's fun. It is. Um so but yeah, but um I love these to death. I have no idea if they're actually any good or if like, it's just a from a, yeah, or if it's just like uh, something that I hold near and dear to my heart. So she's gonna have to tell we me. We did pick it up, and I was like, "Oh my are. god!" It opens with Gemma Doyle is not like other girls. Yeah, not a good start. <laughs> not a good start. But you know. But it also sounds like lots of fun. So like, yeah. I'm not mad at it. And it's elegant gothic, a delicious elegant gothic. Yeah, book. it's Victorian Perfect. era supernatural, like boarding school. There's like, yeah. I like the way they describe it. Actually, on the at the end of the blurb, it says. 
A Great and Terrible Beauty is a curl up under the covers kind of book. A vast canvas of rustling skirts and dancing shadows and things that go bump in the night. All right. I love that. Yeah, and she didn't pick up the third book because they didn't have a paperback copy, but the yeah, third to book have them all be paperback I'm... is, for whatever reason, okay. so scary to me. <laughs> I get like legitimately so scared. It took me three attempts to finish that book because I would have to stop reading like completely each time. I was so terrified, but I, again, so... have no idea if that's like still stands the test of time or. Well, I got the third like one probably. Um, I'll see you have more than words has a copy. Yeah, so that's secondhand. And that would fit with the vibe. And like and I if said, they if they don't, I'll yeah. get it on bookshop.org. Yeah. It, and if none of that works, I'll also look for you and I'll let you know if I find one and I'll send it to you. Are you just going to find different bookstores like on your route home? <laughs> it would not be out of character. <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm give you a new plan. I'm sorry. Oh, not again. Okay. Okay. Um, nice okay. <laughs> so this is another repurchase for me. I, I have upstairs. Yeah, I and still paperback. yeah I I still have the paperback, but it's one of my favorite books, um, and so when I saw a hardback, I wanted it. I snatched it. Um, yeah, so this is Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. So the basic premise of this is that there is a girl who starts living her life right, and then she dies, but she is reborn. And she has like a vague memory of what happened in her past life. And so she goes in a different direction. And so it's about this, uh, this girl who has like reincarnation. Oh my. And, yeah. And it, it goes through World War One and uh, World War Two. So a lot of history and a lot of like very intense situations and yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Very. I, I really love this book. If you don't like repetitive scenes, though, like if Groundhog's Day, like the movie, really bothers you because uh -oh. it's repetitive, then probably don't read this. But if if you're good with that kind of thing, or Actual if you advice, don't know, I like it. Yeah, then excellent. Uh, this is one that I have picked up because I've heard that it is one of their better novels, obviously not the best because everyone has opinions on which one the best is. And uh, it was at the front of the store. I haven't seen it in book in a paperback form before. And it's Daisy Jones and the Six. Yeah. Which is fun. Yeah. I've also read that and it's very enjoyable. Like she mentioned, Evelyn Hugo is totally better, but in my opinion, but that it's, it's also quite different. Like it has, I guess, similarities and in, in that it's written by the same person it's written by the same person but also <laughs> it's about like a fictional famous person and their life yeah you know so pretty cool did you have another one from that store or no uh i, I do you had another... i have i do yeah hardback i have yeah okay so another one <laughs> Uh, that I uh, got from that same used bookstore is another Jillian Flynn, uh, but this time it is a short story called The Grown Up. I uh, read this cute. really quickly yesterday. Um, it's like, I think, how many pages is this? I think I put on the dust jacket upside down. Oh. But it's like 60 pages and it's a quick read, but it's perfect for the season because it's all... I like the back of it as well. Like haunted houses, uh, psychopaths, that kind of thing. Really fun. Show them the back. Oh, yeah. You mm. like ghost stories? Yeah. And this is a book of the month uh, edition, just by chance, and I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> My last one from uh, this first bookstore is A Darker Domain. I have no idea what it's about, but it seems spooky. It's one of these editions, which is the Harper Perennial Olive Editions. I don't have any others of these. I just think they're really cool and I want more of them. Um, and on the back it says, the voice is soft with the darkness that encloses them. You ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Which I, like, I don't need anything more than that. It seems spooky. It seems, oh, it's set in Scotland. So that's also good. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, oh, it is a notable crime book of the year and finalist for the Los Angeles Times Book Prize. So I think it's going to be a good buy, even though I know literally nothing about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but that's kind of the, uh, the fun of buying books is like sometimes you just don't know what's going to be. Especially used ones. Be. Yeah. Yeah. So. Was that everything from our first bookstore? No, I have two more. You have two more. Bring them up. Okay. So the first one is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. So many Evelyns. Um, <laughs> also so many like 
weird number of deaths. Yeah. There like, was another I, one that was like the, the seven, seven deaths, deaths of Stella, Stella for, yeah, Stella Fortuna, Fortuna. yeah, uh, which I also have. <laughs> I I just really want to hear about seven seven there's and a half a, deaths. There's a boat in the harbor which is called Fortuna, like the number four. Yeah, and then tuna. And that's very funny. <laughs> that is very funny. Yeah. So like, how how would you describe this? This is like a supernatural like you don't know mystery. That at first. Okay, but I know that. Yeah, so like the, it opens and there's a guy in the woods and he hears a gunshot and he thinks someone's been killed. He hears people like running through the woods, but he has no other memories. Yeah. And it goes from there. And it's so, so good. The first chapter is a little slow because he the narrator doesn't know anything. Mm-hmm. And this is also kind of like, if Groundhog Day is not your jam, don't read it. Yeah, I have but definitely heard that too. It's so good. Also, I just, I've, I listened to it on audio, so seeing the book. Yeah, with the, with the maps. Map and the, oh, I'm really glad you got that. <laughs> I know, and I, I really appreciate a good hardback, so um, yeah, I mean. This is one thing that we're different in. Yeah, we are very different uh, about that, but um I mean, I, what can I say? <laughs> They're just gorgeous. <laughs> and then finally, from that bookstore, unless you have another one mm -mm, from there, mm -hmm. okay, um, is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Yeah. So this is sci-fi. I usually don't read a lot of sci-fi. Are you happy with your life? Um, Yikes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have he heard the good things about this author. I've been really wanting, wanting to uh, read Recursion. Same author. Um, Someone yellow. What? Yeah, Someone it's yellow. yellow. Um, uh, but yeah, I I don't really know anything about this. But uh, gosh, are, yeah, are you happy <laughs> with your life? Those are the last words that Jason Destin hears before the master abductor knocks him unconscious. Before he awakens to find himself strapped to a gurney, surrounded by strangers in hazmat suits. Starting off really really well. <laughs> um, yeah, and then before a, a, a man Jason's never met smiles down at him and says, welcome back, my friend. Oh my gosh. So it's going to be dark. It's going to be maybe a little scary. It's going to be interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Shelby also now has a bookstagram, so if you want to go and follow her so you can hear all of her thoughts on these books once she's read them, do yeah. that. It's Shell Bookstra. <laughs> Shell Bookstra. Shell Bookstra. <laughs> and then we went to a second... Ooh bookstore because the used bookstore didn't have the two books that I had forgotten to get at the previous bookstore. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and so the ones that I actually needed, felt like I needed to get, that I wanted to get to the felt. point that we went to a second store, was Matt Haig's The Midnight Library, which I don't think needs any more um, description for me. I think people have been loving this enough already. Anna, who you guys saw when I did a unboxing of a bookish box. She said this was like one of her favorite books of the year and that it was really good and possibly one of her favorite books ever. Then I also needed to get Rebecca because Shelby told me to. Love Rebecca. I, I, I'm, I already ranted about this in one of the in other- In the video that we filmed, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So, like I said, gothic, <laughs> creepy, Shelby perfect for, for the season. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> okay, so I got three books from the second store. Uh, the first one is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't read it yet, which is kind of crazy. And I'm going to give you book two because I have it. Yeah. And I've read it. I haven't read book three, so you're going to have to buy that one for yourself. Okay. But I, I also know that it, this one, the Hugo Award in 2016, I think the second book was 2017 and the third was 2018. They all won them. Yeah, they all won it, which is incredible. I don't, I can't think of any other series that's done that. I'm sure there might have been one before, but I can't think of it. I can't think of one. Um, and yeah. Also, I didn't know anything by N.K. Jemisin before this year, and I'm really mad that no one thought to recommend it to me before. Yeah, that's really... She's incredible. She's incredible, and it's also Didn't really impressive. Did Genius Award? I might have to take that out if it's not true, but... I, I, I don't know, but I would believe it. If you told me that, I would 100% believe it, because everything I've heard is just, like, rave reviews about all of her work. So, uh, that's the first one. The second one is a Ingrid recommendation and... Uh, so she leads the 2020 round of the MacArthur Genius Grants Book Award. Ah. So that was on October 7th, 2020. So I hope that she gets it because genius. That is the correct word to use. <laughs> yeah, genius. Go ahead. Okay, yes. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> so the second book I, I got was a Ingrid recommendation and that is Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts. Uh, it's... 
fun. It is an adventure through Boston, which is my favorite city, and I used to live there, and I miss it so much, so it's gonna be so fun to read about it. And uh, I assume she talks to ghosts. I'm just like I'm throwing so it out there. I'm just like excited. making an assumption here. I'm so excited that you're gonna read. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about this because I'm sure, I'm sure I'm gonna have some thoughts. So then I picked up this one because I have actually heard of it before. I think the third in the series just came out and is on best bestsellers lists at the moment. But I also picked it up because it was 50% off. And beautiful. And beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I think once I show the cover, they'll see that for themselves. Yeah. But it's definitely why you picked it up at first. 100%. Um, also, I love magic. And I love books that involve magic. And yes. I love books that involve different cultures, versions of magic. So this is Alex the Bruja. Bruja. Yeah. I, Bruja. I can't say words correctly. I'm so sorry. The most powerful witch in a generation, and she hates magic. At her death day celebration, Alex performs a spell to rid herself of her power, but it backfires. Her whole family vanishes into thin air, leaving her alone with Nova, a brujo she can't trust, but who may be Alex's only chance at saving her family. Only chance of saving family. Ah, uh, okay. I love it. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> Excellent. Um, do you Emma, do, I'll talk cool. about them at the same time. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so the last thing I picked up. For now. For now. <laughs> is uh, Writers and Lovers by Lily King, uh, the author of Euphoria. So this one is set in, I believe, 1990s Cambridge, Massachusetts. So oh it's gosh. another like... <laughs> Man, I don't think I know that. I've seen this everywhere and I have no idea what it's about. This yeah, is great. <laughs> um, it, it's literary fiction. Um, as far as uh, my understanding is that it's like fairly slow paced and sort of a character study kind of book. Um, but yeah, she's uh, blindsided by her mother's sudden death and wrecked by a recent love affair, and she arrives in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the summer of 1997 without a plan. Her mail consists of wedding invitations and final notices from debt collectors, a former child golf prodigy she now waits tables, uh, tables in Harvard Square, and rents a tiny moldy room at the side of a garage where she works on the novel she's been writing for six years. Uh, she's 31, and she's like like trying to find herself and her, you know, classic. We'll enjoy for sure. And then these I wasn't planning on getting, um, <laughs> but as Shelby was paying, uh, my attention was drawn to the graphic novel selection that they had curated. Yeah, and I typed her up. I... She had me up. <laughs> and that is Pumpkin Heads and Sheets. I love a good graphic novel. I am currently giving away the three Heartstopper books on Instagram. Hopefully this video goes up before I give those away. But um, Random Librarians, go check it out. <laughs> they were really fun to read, they were really quick to read, and I love a good graphic novel, so I'm excited to read these. This one got a lot of hype last year around this time, because I think that's when it was published, and also Perfect. it is very fall. Um, and then I have heard great things about this. I think I've read a short story of it that like an excerpt was printed for the ALA conference. Mm -hmm. That sounds right, right? That, that does sound right. Yeah. So those are the books that we've bought since the last time we made a video telling you about the books that we bought. <laughs> yeah, which was literally like a day and a half ago, maybe. Maybe. But we're really, <laughs> I'm really glad, I'm not gonna speak for you, but I'm really glad with the further purchases that were made. I am just so glad that I have someone who accepts me the way I am and encourages you me. to spend money. <laughs> to on buy books. more books. On books. Drag your library. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. Thanks for watching. That's all we got. Yeah. Bye. Official outro. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>